Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreational programming session with Mr. Zosin. So um, today we're going to continue developing the animation programming engine and on the previous stream we actually ended up with a very interesting thing. Right, so I was trying to create like a, an asynchronous engine and ended up uh, creating an um, OOP system, right? <laughs> So essentially, uh, we created a notion of a task, and a task looks like this, <laughs> right? A task looks like this. Uh, so essentially, you have uh, the data pointer, right? So the data pointer and a bunch of methods, right? So and um, yeah, essentially, you can have different kinds of tasks that perform different kinds of actions over time, and then the main event loop, the main event loop on each frame pulls the task calling update with its own data and the environment in which it is running usually environment contains the size of the window the frame frame, frame rate the, the not really frame rate but delta time and then it returns your boolean indicating whether the task has finished or not so this is sort of like an asynchronous task right and so what kind of tasks you can have all right so what kind of tasks you can have so if you take a look at the example that we developed on the previous stream we, we developed like a uh, loading and yeah loading animation so and loading animation just shuffles the squares so let me actually demonstrate you let me actually demonstrate you so i'm going to do something like this so we rebuild everything so panim build lib square right so lib square and there we go so this is basically the loaded animation uh that we developed right with that specific asynchronous system and what's interesting is that this particular animation uses very simple primitive like two main primitive primitive interpolations it's move the square from one position to another and recolor the square and then we have sort of like a super task not really super task but the tasks that allow you to compose some other tasks let me show you so the two most important ones are the task group and the task sequence right so essentially i off screen kind of refactored this thing uh in the sense that now for the inter uh, for the moving the position and recoloring we have a different kind of task which is interpolation of a vector so here i say okay interpolate 2d vector which is a position of a square uh, from its current position to a new position on a grid within 250 milliseconds like so right so this is basically interpolation so and that is moving uh, square from one position to another recoloring is interpolating four dimension and vector right so because color is rgba right so we're interpolating four dimensional one and my idea is that we're going to have a fixed amount of this um of these sort of like a tasks that interpolate a scalar two-dimensional vector three-dimensional vector and four-dimensional vector and depending on your situation you're going to be mapping them to different sort of factors that you're interpolating and you're going to have like this animation that you can program uh, and stuff like that so we have task groups and task sequences this is actually a super cool idea it's kind of similar to um to the ui layout but it's in time if that makes any sense it's a uh, UI layout, not a spatial, because UI is a spatial layout. This is a layout in time, right? And essentially, task sequence accepts uh, a bunch of tasks. So, so it accepts this group as one task, uh, this group as one task, and this task and this group. Right, so here, this group reshuffles the rectangles, then this group recolors them, this one moves one element on the, at the bottom, and then it recolors them back. So task sequence executes these tasks sequentially. So first it executes this task, then it executes this task, then it executes this task, and then this one, until like all of them are done. So it's sequential one. Task group also accepts a sequence of tasks, but it executes them simultaneously. So, and that way, that way, you can create this task layout. You can have things that go in sequence and then things that go in parallel. But then if you group them, it's a single task that uh, executes these things simultaneously. So if you take a look at the how uh, animation is played, right? So first thing it does, it reshuffles all of them simultaneously like this, right? You see, this was the first reshuffle. Then it recolors them. Right, so it recolored them. Then it moves the bottom one to the left. And then it recolors them back to their original thing. And it repeats that. Right, 
So, and this is a single shuffle. And we repeat that shuffle three times and we put that in a sequence as well. So, you see, and the description of the logic of the whole animation is basically this. It's uh, 28 lines of code. Right, it's just this description, right? But the task system is actually itself, it's pretty big implementation, right? So to make all of that work, we had to put a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a effort. Um, so task sec and task group are variadic. Yeah, exactly. They are in fact variadic. So the problems with variadic is kind of interesting, right? So I had to actually have an extra macro, uh, right? Because usually if you use variadic, you need to have some sort of a frame of reference when to stop accepting the arguments, right? Because the, the variadic function doesn't know upfront how many arguments you put into the, uh, into the function. It can only know that at runtime until it like, stops uh, pulling, the, uh, pulling the arguments. So what we're doing here, we create an empty task, right? And task is just this structure as already said. So we say that the end of the tasks is the task that is fully filled with zeros. This pointer is going to be zero, this one is going to be zero, this is going to be zero, and that such task denotes the end of the task arguments. And then we just do a little bit of a macro magic to automatically put a zero task at the end in here, right? So, and that's how it works. So, and within that task, what do we do? Uh, right, so we just start variating arguments, we pull the arguments until we encounter something with an update null, uh, we just decided to use update, we could have actually used data or uh, some other field, I just pick whatever field came to my mind, so it doesn't really matter, so this one is zero. And then we just append them to dynamic list, right, until we encounter this thing, we just keep appending, 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 and then at the end we just constructing the task uh, with the data and methods and stuff like that. So null terminated tasks essentially, yeah. So, and that's what created this very convenient interface, uh, right? So, and that's what we're using. So it's a very addict thing. Unfortunately, um, very addicts in C are huge pain, a pain in the ass, absolute freaking pain in the ass, but you can smooth it out. You can lube it up a little bit. So, but, but here is a little bit of a problem, right? Here's a little bit of a problem. This doesn't really work well with hot reloading. Fucking doesn't. So let me show you something interesting. So what if I want to make these colors slightly brighter? Uh, right, so can I just do a little bit of a Emacs magic, right? So this is going to be color brightness, uh, brightness, uh, right? So maybe I'm going to actually zoom it out a little bit, uh, like so. Uh, and let's make it half uh, way brighter. And maybe I'm going to replace this color with the background. Uh, right, so this is going to be background, uh, like so. And I'm going to try to recompile this entire thing. So, and if I try to now hot reload this entire stuff, it literally sec faulted. Who knows why? Who knows why? Any ideas, chat, on why it sec faulted? And it will always sec fault. If you make significant changes to some functions, it will always sec fault. Uh, because of function change position memory. Exactly. Bingo. <laughs> yes. We basically built, uh, we basically built the, um, you know, execution graph, which is actually, it's a tree, right? So, but the execution, execution is more like a graph, uh, right? It's actually a tree. Well, tree is also a graph. Wait a second. Yeah. So we have this tree and each node may contain pointers, but this entire tree is located uh, in a DLL. Okay, so let me actually maybe draw that. I think the, the best way to explain that would be to draw that. Uh, just reload the function pointers. Yeah, yeah. Warning may contain pointers. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So uh, let me let me see. So let's do the following thing. So panim, uh, it's kind of skewed a little bit. All right. So this is panim. Uh, right, panim. Mm. Panim. So, and this is an executable, right? This is just an exe. I wonder if I can uh, just do something like this dot exe, right? And this one is like, like this. Then you have um, an animation, right? So it's going to be lib, uh, lib anim. And this is an SO file, right? So this is an SO file, which means shared object and it's dynamically loaded. Right, so, and essentially Panim just like loads this thing up and it constantly pulls it, uh, pulls it and pulls the frames out of it. 
so to speak. So the task, the task is allocated within the library in here, right? So this is the task and it's stored in this state. Uh, it is stored in a state. Uh, so when we unload this entire thing, when we unload this entire thing, this thing actually persists in memory. It actually persists in memory. And the thing about this thing is that it contains pointers to functions. It contains pointers to functions. And the pointers to functions are within this dynamic library. They're within this dynamic library. And when we hot reload this entire thing, we actually replace it in memory with a completely different version of libanim. Uh, with a completely different version of libanim. But, as I already said, this task thing persists and it points at things that don't exist in memory anymore. They just don't exist in memory anymore. So this thing is not hot reloadable. It's kind of cool that it's composable like that, right? So that they can uh, switch things around and stuff like that. But I can't hot reload that because we're using function pointers. What would be solution to this kind of thing? What would be solution to this kind of thing? Uh, so the solution is surprisingly the same as for dynamic arrays. You won't believe, but this problem is very similar to dynamic arrays. So dynamic arrays, how do dynamic arrays work actually? How do dynamic arrays work? So you don't really know how many elements you're gonna push into the dynamic array. And uh, essentially, you just pre-allocate a little bit of a chunk, right? So you pre-allocate a little bit of a chunk, uh, and then you fill up this chunk with one element, then another element, and so on and so forth, until you fill up the entirety of the chunk, right? So the entirety of the chunk. Then if you want to push more, you actually allocate a bigger chunk, what I personally do is as twice, uh, twice as much of this thing, uh, right? So copy this thing into here and continue pushing and continue pushing in here. But since you deallocated this entire thing, if you held any pointers to an, any element in here, that pointer is going to be invalidated. That pointer is literally going to be invalidated. We'll get a rate from Probit. Thank you so much for the rate. What's up? What's up? Right. How do you solve that? So how do you solve this kind of thing with the dynamic array? It's literally the same, uh, the same problem. So instead of pointers, you use indices, right? So you use an index within that array. Uh, so then the next time you need to access that element, you actually look up by the index of the current chunk, uh, right? So that's how you do that. And surprisingly, since it's a similar problem to dynamic arrays, you solve it in a similar fashion. Instead of function pointers, you use indices. Indices in a table of functions. Table of functions. Have, have you guys heard about such thing as vtable? <sighs> so, in computer programming, a virtual uh, method table is a virtual function table, virtual co Jesus fucking Christ. Wikipedia, why are you so anal? Uh, right, it's a dispatch table. Mechanisms in this program to support dynamic dispatch. Who writes these fucking articles? Right, so whatever. Not read, don't read Wikipedia. Wikipedia is shit. So virtual tables is literally a table of functions like that. Right. And essentially, like, how would you do that? Uh, so we can take all of these methods, right? So we can take all of these methods and maybe put them into separate structure. Uh, something like a task of funks, right? So, and this is a task funks. And here, uh, instead of, um, you know, this point is we're going to have maybe a funks index. index. There we go. And then somewhere, uh, we're going to have a task funks uh, vtable, which is going to contain some amount, some amount of, of these things, right? Um, and this thing is going to be indexed within that table. It's going to be within the index uh, within that table. So, and uh, here is a, a funny thing. Here is a funny thing. We need to somehow build up that table. We need to build up that table. And we also need to be able to uh, 
extend that table right so because okay we can allocate enough of the slots in that virtual table for all of the class classes in here but what if we want to add more classes in the future that are not supported so this particular thing has to be extendable so maybe because of that we're going to have a virtual table as a dynamic array so to speak right so this is going to be task uh let's call it v table maybe uh, right so this is going to be v table uh, and then we're going to have a task Funks, which are the items, right? And then we're gonna have the count, and then we're gonna have the capacity. There we go. Right, and essentially, maybe uh, we're going to have an instance of this thing somewhere globally, right? So we're gonna call it V table, maybe we're gonna call it task V table, uh, right? And we're gonna initialize it like with zero. So this is a global table uh, of these functions, a global table of these functions. And uh, one of the things we probably want to do, we want to create a function that registers new functions within this table and gives us the index that we can then use within uh, this element, sort of speak, right? So let's do something like uh, task v table register, right? So we're going to accept task funks, right? So this is going to be task funks. Um, so we're going to accept by value and it's going to return just a size t. Right, so maybe funks should be not in, but rather like a size t, like so. So, yeah. So you'll have to first implement these two methods. You will have to pack them into this structure and you will have to pass them to the vtable register. So it registers that in that table and you get an index that you have to put in this particular uh, in this particular thing. What's funny is that now that index denotes the class of object. So you can actually do um, a runtime type inspection, like introspection of a particular class or particular object, right? So you have a task, you don't really know what class it belongs to. You can quickly identify by looking at the funks because func is unique for a particular class. So it becomes like a type tag, right? It becomes like a type tag. So that's actually kind of cool. It simultaneously shows you the uh, functions in the virtual table and it also denotes the type, so then you can inspect and do reflections or introspections or whatever the fuck it's called in your specific language. It doesn't really matter, right? So they're slightly different, but I mean, the idea is, is basically the same. Uh, right, so thank you so much. Uh, and null no point exception for tier three subscription. I keep saying don't do tier three subscription, right? It doesn't give you anything, right? It's just like you're just wasting money, seriously. It's, you're literally wasting money. So downgrade it to tier one. So thank you so much with the message. Hello, hello, how? Is it going it's going fine thank you thank you thank you thank you right so and yeah what's interesting is that now we need to be able to actually have like no we need to register all of the necessary methods for all of these classes and we need to know their tags right so we need to know their tags somehow um so what i was thinking is that maybe the easiest way would be to just like for these tags to have global variables, right? So something like it's going to be size t, um, you know, move two-dimensional vector, uh, move two-dimensional, so maybe task, move two-dimensional vector tag, right? So then move four-dimensional vector, then task uh, sequence tag, then group tag. And initially they are initialized with zero, but maybe what we're going to be uh, doing, we're going to be having a special function that task v table rebuild, Right, so and what it will do, it will clean up the entire uh, V table in here, push all of the necessary functions into that V table, remembering the tags in these specific uh, variables. So then they can be used later when constructing these uh, sort of things. Right, so that's one of the things we can do. Uh, right, so let's actually go ahead and maybe implement those things. And essentially, what we'll have to do we'll have to rebuild the virtual table on each hot reload right on each hot reload uh so why not just reload the tasks on plugin post reload because you will lose their state the point of hot reloading is to not lose the state of the animation because at that point you can just restart the whole application anyway so if I'm going to be resetting the whole state of the complex of the animation on each hot reload, why am I having hot reloading again? Like, why do I need hot reloading? Excuse me? 
It's like uh, wasting time. Like you're suggesting to waste time. No, no, no. We, we need to preserve the state. Each task, the task tree may be actually super complex and they may be in a particular state and they want to stay in that state. Uh, so you don't have to restart the program. But if you restart the animation, you effectively restarted the program. You restart, if you reset the entire animation, you restarted the program, you wasted, like the animation could be infinitely complex and you want to stop the animation at a particular moment because it doesn't really look right at that particular thing. You want to switch the colors, but if you're restarting the animation, you lost the state. You need to preserve the state. If you're restarting the whole thing, you're restarting the application, you might as well get rid of the hot reloading. Mm. Okay, I, I didn't understand why it is not obvious for some people, doesn't matter. Um... All right, so where is the... Oh, uh, let me... Um, just a second. Okay, so uh, now let's actually go ahead and implement this kind of thing. Uh, tasks.c. Uh -huh. So, yeah, let's implement the registering first. Right, so the registering, I suppose, is going to be pushing the uh, the virtual, uh, the function to the virtual table, right, into the global one. So then this is the header, right? So, and we're defining those things as global things. So maybe it would be better to actually define them within uh, this entire stuff, right? So, and this is going to be more like external stuff, right? So this is going to be more like external stuff, uh, right? So, eh, just a second. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be external, uh, like so. And uh, so since we're, feel like, external is not usually assigned with zero, right? It's usually not assigned with zero. So what we're going to be doing in here is... Oh, if we're going to be pushing, how exactly we're going to be allocating this entire stuff, right? So because usually we are working with arenas, uh, maybe we're going to ac be accepting an arena uh, to like to denote the place where exactly we are allocating all of that. Um, so and since rebuilding is going to be happening through uh, repushing the, all of these things, I think we're going to accept arenas here as well. Uh, so yeah. Uh, now, let's do the following thing. So I suppose the index of the thing is going to be like literally uh, the size of the virtual table, right? So it's going to be, uh, let's say it's it's an index and this is going to be tasks, uh, task v table. So this is going to count. And we're going to just return the index. So uh, arena uh, di append. So this one is an arena. This one is an arena. So this is going to be a. And uh, so we just push the, uh, push the funks in here. All right. So that's about it, honestly. Right. So we just push this entire thing and we return this index and that should be enough. Right. Okay. So now uh, let's go ahead and see how we're going to rebuild the whole thing. Uh, right. So let's see how we're going to rebuild the whole thing. So when we're rebuilding the whole thing, I suppose we probably need to clean up the task with table, right? So since we're rebuilding it, yeah, so it only makes sense to maybe even mem set the whole thing. So since it's inside of the arena, it always makes sense to actually mem set this entire stuff. So task uh, with table, like so. Uh, all right, so, and then in here, how many tags we have? So we have these kind of tags, so we need to rebuild them, sort of speak. Right. So I really don't feel great that these things are variables because I actually capitalize their names because usually capitalized name mean, means a constant, right? So, but in this particular case, it means the um, uh, the variable, but it's just like, it's it's sort of like dynamic, right? So it's a dynamic constant, um, variable constant. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so here we're gonna be doing something like a task uh, the table register and we need to register this entire thing. So we're going to be providing this kind of thing and let's say this is going to be task func, uh, right? So and in here we have two methods update and reset and we're going to be doing task move v2 update. So this is the first method and task uh, move v2 
reset right so and um, rebuilding it so if the pointer to these functions will change rebuilding the v table will uh, basically pick up the newer the newer uh, pointer to this function so that's basically the point of this entire stuff right? that's basically the point of this entire stuff so task a v table a register right so this is going to be a uh, task funks and uh, so this is going to be update task uh, move version 4 update and then uh, reset like so so now this one is going to be again task v table register and what the hell this is like a lot of stuff that you have to do just to create a class i wonder how many things you will have to do to create a class like for for, for task right so you need to create the class that stores the state the structure that stores the state um you need to create the update and reset functions you need to create the constructor and you need to register uh those methods in a virtual table and the, uh, this is how you created a class. So that's basically what you have to do. Um, so I missed it, but what's the difference between V2 and V4? This is not versions, this is vectors. So these tasks interpolate vectors, two-dimensional vectors and four-dimensional vectors. This is not versions. <laughs> Maybe I could have called them VEC, uh, VEC4, but it's, uh, they're already very long names, right? I didn't want to make them even longer. So yeah, maybe it would make sense to actually call them back, but they already called V2 and V4 like in literally everywhere in the source code. And this is too much effort to rename it right now. So maybe I'm going to do that a little bit later uh, when I, I do have time to do that. So task funks, uh, right? So, and this is going to be update task. Um, so this one is going to be sequence uh, update, and this is going to be the reset. So this is going to be the reset. And the same thing is going to be for the group. So let's actually put this stuff in here. And uh, this one is group. All right. So let me try to rebuild this entire stuff. And uh, yeah. So di append. So funks. Aha. So we have to provide the pointer to the v table, right? So this is a v table. Uh, right. So task v table. Task uh, v table. There we go. All right, so everything seems to be fine. Cool. So now we have a problem with the constructors, right? So because we removed function pointers from here, what you have to do instead in here, right? So you have to get rid of that and use funks uh, task move v2 tag, right? So now we are not taking these pointers directly. We taking the index in the virtual table. We taking the index in the virtual table, uh, right? So let's actually take a look at this one. So we need to do that for each individual constructor in here. So this is going to be funks. You know what? Since it's a tag and it's not necessarily denotes only functions within the virtual table, it's not necessarily denotes only the function virtual table. It just also denotes the type, the, the class. We might as well just call it tag. Right. Who said we can't do that? So I think it makes a lot of sense. Like this is a tag and you're looking up uh, a particular function within a virtual table by a tag. Uh, right, so that's kind of cool. Mm. I tried to implement the virtual methods in C a while back and it didn't go well. Uh, I don't think I fully understand them, so I'm excited about this specific topic today. Uh, right, we'll see if it, it's gonna work uh, as well. But it kind of works on the paper, right? So with the explanation that I gave, uh, so instead of like using function pointers because the functions constantly move in the memory, we just use indices to sort of point them, uh, to, to sort of to sort of pin them. Um, not really pin them; they're still moving in the memory, uh, right? So we just like keep in track of them, right? S through the indices. In indices are stable. Whatever is by those indices is constantly moving, right? Um, pin mentioned. I didn't think pin works exactly as this thing because, as far as I know, pin just ensures at compile time that an object is not going to change its address. If I understand correctly, is, is that how it works? I, I don't quite remember. Let me actually uh, look it up. Rust um, reference, uh, reference. So there is a doc. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's it. No, no, yeah. So in our case, we kind of allow functions to move around. It's just like we, the, the addresses that are changing, we keep them in a table in a stable positions, right? So that's, that's what they are. That's what they are. Anyways, so I want to rename them to tag because I, I think it kind of makes more sense. Mm -mm. 
<clears throat> so this is the tag. Uh, so never learned C or Asm. Learning from looking at your project. Any good to read you can suggest for understanding different different memory allocators. Um, I don't know. Try to implement them. Um, just Google things up. Just ask ChatGPT. Um, I don't know. This is the way. Like people keep asking me, like what to read to learn all of that. The way I learned all of that is over many many years. I was just googling different things depending on what I needed for my current like projects or anything like that, and I stitch my knowledge from the pieces into coherent picture. It's pointless to ask me where I read all of that. My answer is on the internet. I read it on the internet. Google ChatGPT. Good luck. So, and I'm not gatekeeping. This is actual true. Like, I don't know. Just Google shit. All of this stuff is in the internet. It's just like... And people automatically assume that I'm some sort of a gatekeeping asshole that is hiding that, like, the magical book where he read all of that. No, like, it's in internet. Fucking internet. It's, it's, it's all there. Just, just read the internet. Google, chat GPT. Uh, anyways, so uh, tag. So task, move, version 4, tag. Mm. <laughs> Give us the book, gatekeeper. Uh. Where is it? Where is the book? Where is the fucking book? <clears throat> On the internet. All right. Here's an interesting thing. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So we're calling the reset method directly. So it is the task. It used to have a reset as a method. So what we did is we just called it. And then we also feed its data from the same structure. We can't do that shit anymore, chat. We can't do that because the reset method is not located in there. Reset method is located within the task V table. So we have items of that V table. So, and we have a tag. So within the task, uh, let me take a look at the definition of this task. Uh, within the task, we have a tag. By that tag, within the virtual table, we'll look up uh, task funks, task funks, and here we have these functions that are constantly moving in the memory. So if you need to call a reset, you just call it like that, and you provide environment, uh, and then the data like this. So if I understand correctly, this is the kind of shit C++ generates for you automatically, right? So it automatically generates that global virtual table for a particular uh, for a particular interface that you're implementing. And every time you call a virtual uh, virtual method, it generates this kind of call. So it generates a lookup in the virtual table. It grabs the function from there and it calls it like that. Right. So that's what it does. Maybe, by the way, because of that, it would be way easier for us to implement some sort of wrappers for these virtual calls so we don't have to do that all the time. Right. So essentially, uh, we can have something like task uh, reset. Right. So this is a task reset. And uh, it's only need to accept an environment, I suppose. Right. So because the data is within the task. So we accept the task that we're about to call. Right. So the task that we're about to call and an additional environment. And the same with update. But update on top of that also sort of returns a boolean. Right. So that will probably make it a little bit easier uh, for us to work with. Uh, so in here, what I do, I take the task, I take the tag. Then I take the task V table, task V table. I look up an item by that specific tag. So since it's a method reset, I grab the reset function and I feed. Uh, so what, how do I feed? I feed an environment and the task data, right? This is a single virtual call. This is a single virtual call, essentially. Uh, right. And we can repeat this kind of thing for update as well, right? So we can do return. Uh, and this one is going to be update, right? So, and if we go back to where we were doing all of that now, maybe instead of doing this, I could do something like task reset. So I can even inline this entire thing like that. 
uh, and then I provide the environment, right? So now I can get rid of this. So group reset, as you can see what it does, it iterates through all of the tasks within the group and just resets them. And this is gonna be just a virtual uh, virtual call like that. Um, so makes sense, makes sense to me. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's do it like this. Uh, task, oh, task is not defined. So we need to probably, let's actually bring it up above uh, the task funks, so because we kind of like using them in here, like actually in here, honestly. Um, and let's try to rebuild this entire thing. Okay, so similar situation, similar situation. So we might as well maybe not take it by a reference, right? So because task, for example, update ac accepts by value, right? And then an environment, right? So, and this virtual call now looks like this. Looks all right. Actually, looks alright. I was building com just like in Win API. Not really, actually. So com, if I remember correctly, com also employs reference counting. We don't really have reference counting here. We're using arenas, uh, right? So essentially, if you allocated like a bunch of objects at once, like a lot of them, you deallocate them also at once, right? So uh, they have like a very well defined lifetime, so to speak. Mm, all right. So what else do we have in here? Uh, so. Yeah, okay, so similar situation. Uh, let's do it like that. Ah, yeah, so we don't have to take it by a pointer. It's a completely different situation. Okay. Ooh, and now we're, yeah, so we got rid of the update, but we were using update as an indicator of the end of the arguments for the constructor of the task group. Uh, we can just maybe change it to data, right? So data is a good indicator that this is maybe an end. Okay, so this is a group reset, uh, and we're gonna use a tag task group tag. There we go. So now we have a group tag. Uh, what else uh, do we have in here? So this is sequence. So it's a task. Um, it's a reset, right? So task reset it environment. And we get rid of that. It's kind of even simplifying, actually. I, I'm surprised to see that it's simplifying. Huh. Didn't expect that. So task update, uh, task environment. So the whole call actually becomes shorter really didn't expect that and by the way this data in reality is this like it's, it's literally this honestly so <laughs> yeah it's this um so it's like a lot of these things this is what c plus plus does under the hood uh right so this is what c plus plus does under the hood surprisingly i think i think that's what it does okay so this is a similar situation now we use data as sort of the end of that specific task uh, right, so this is another one. So, and I think this is the end of the file. So we're almost done with the compiler system refactoring. So we can now do task uh, sequence tag, right? So it's a task sequence tag. And what else do we have in here? Okay. Ooh, and yeah. So essentially now in the plugin, in the whole animation, the whole animation is just a single task. It's a root task, right? So, and when I'm constructing the task, I'm just constructing it like this. So I call loading, which is, which constructs the task for the animation, which constructs it up to, out of the smaller animations and so on and so forth. You have this task tree and uh, the, the plugin itself, it holds only like one root task and it, in its own update, in its own update, it just pulls that root task, updating, interpolating and stuff like that. So that's basically what's going on in here. Uh, right, so in here I can do task um, update, task update. And essentially, so we do p uh, task and we pass an environment in here like so. So now we can do it like that. So here we're just like pulling this entire stuff, right? So we keep pull pulling this entire stuff. And that seems to be working. So if I understand correctly, if I try to run it right now, it will sec fold, obviously, because we have not build we have not built the virtual table, All right? So virtual table, in my opinion, should be built on each reload of the plugin. The data, the, the task tree should survive between reloading of the plugins, as I explained in here, right? So this is a task tree and it survives between the plugins, but the functions, they are changed between the plugins and we have to constantly rebuild them on each reload. So that's what we need to do. Uh, so usually I think it's safe to assume 
that load assets and unload assets is a great way to do that, right? So because we're reloading the assets on each reload of the plugin, so we can view the virtual table as an asset of the animation, right? So it basically has the same lifetime as font, for instance, right? So it exists for the entirety of the plugin. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, so you can, if you take a look at the lifetimes of the uh, of this particular animation framework, you have two things. You have the plugin. You have the plugin. Uh, and you can think of its lifetime that looks like this. And you have the state of that plugin. You have the state of that plugin. And usually, usually, the lifetime of the state of the plugin is longer than the lifetime of the plugin, of the code of the plugin. And that's what manifests hot reloading. That's what manifests host reloading. As I already said, quite often you're working on a long, complex animation. And in the middle of a long, complex animation, you notice that the colors are not quite right. The positions are not quite right. You paused it, you literally paused it, and you want to fix that. How do you fix that? You fix it in the code and you hot reload the plugin, retaining the state. That's the whole point. If you're resetting the state of the animation on each hot reload, you don't have hot reloading. You're defeating the whole purpose of this whole of, of this thing. You're defeating the whole purpose, right? So, in in our case, um, the uh, virtual table resides somewhere here. So the virtual table is in here. The actual objects objects that call to this uh, table they reside here. That's the main difference between them. We sort of separated function pointers and the states. The virtual table in this thing and uh, the actual object, the actual state in this lifetime. Cold reloading, yeah. Cold reloading. Restarting, uh, cold reloading, aka restarting the whole application uh, with losing the state. Mm, I ran out of tea. <clears throat> um, I watch live on 2x speed much better. Uh, how is that even possible? I think it is possible if you're watching in the past, right? So because maybe you can... Um, so Twitch, I think Twitch uh, records the VODs and you can even watch the VOD while the stream is happening. So you can actually rewind a little bit back, uh, back and watch at 2x speed. But at some point you're going to... Uh, you're gonna hit the current stream, so it's kind of stopped working. So I don't really know how exactly it's gonna work after that. Um, stronger gravitational force. <laughs> okay, that's really funny. Anyway, so we want to rebuild the virtual table. Uh, let me let me see how we can even do that. Uh, rebuild virtual table. We need to have an arena. We need to have an arena. We already have an arena in the plugin thing, but the plugin arena resides in the state lifetime we even explicitly said that it resides in a state lifetime so but we need an arena that is of this lifetime so i feel like maybe we're going to introduce the second arena so the second arena is going to be basically a plug or maybe an asset arena right so as already said we have two main lifetimes state and asset right so and this one is more like an asset uh, asset lifetime so it's a plug lifetime uh, all right, so and in here, uh, we're going to just say, okay, just do it in here. So this is going to be asset uh, arena. Honestly, I think we also need to reset that arena before reloading, right? So we're going to do mem set, um, right? Actually, not mem set, like arena, arena reset. So we're resetting the whole arena, cleaning up in like virtual tables and stuff like that. And then we're rebuilding the virtual tables within the same arena. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, so let's try to compile this entire stuff. Uh, is it gonna work? Hopefully that is going to work. All right, so, and now if I try to run this entire thing, it is working. It is actually working. Let's go ahead and try to change some of these things in here. Uh, right, so, and see if it's going to crash or not. Hopefully it's not going to crash. So I change that. Uh -huh. And it's going to be a foreground color. And let's actually try to do this kind of thing. Uh, all right. So we rebuild this entire thing. And I refreshed it and restarted it. Okay. So that worked. So, yeah. We moved away 
the point is to a separate table that we rebuild. And now instead of pointing to specific functions, instead of function pointers, we have indices that also, by the way, serves as tags so we can introspect the, the classes at runtime, right? So now our sort of like state of the class uh, looks like this, which is actually kind of surprising. So let, let me actually find the task. So task, yeah, there we go. So this is how our single object, single abstract object looks like. It's a tag and it's a data. So I, I think it's even called something like a, uh, like a fat pointers. I, I think that there is a name like a fat pointer in the sense that it's a pointer plus a tag, right? So plus a tag. Um, so, and we can use that tag to look up this thing in a virtual table. Hmm. So, and now it should be super easy to uh, maybe even create a, a new task, right? So, and you should not be able to to be limited by uh, by this specific task in here. So, what, what kind of task we can create? Uh, what kind of task we can create? We can create maybe I don't know a thing that prints something on uh, on the logs. Uh, like every time it is sort of like hit or something. Oh, let's actually create maybe wait task, a task that doesn't exist in, in the sort of like library or something like that. So, and we'll see how much uh, effort does it take to introduce like a new kind of implementation of that interface, right? So let's actually see how we can do that. Uh, okay, so we need the state, right? So we need the data. So this one is gonna be uh, wait data wait data and it's going to hold the duration for like for how long we're waiting okay that's pretty cool so now we need to implement two methods right so there's two methods in here update and reset update is called on each frame and it advances the task it advances the task and then uh reset it resets the animation so it can be replayed again so let's actually create a method um you know task wait update right so it's going to accept the environment within which it's running so it's a very important thing it contains the parameter of the screen and stuff like that and we're going to have a row data right so it's just a row pointer but we're going to assume that that row data is actually in reality weight data that specific data that we have in here right so this is basically the data we convert the data and there you go and now we can access what's inside of it so essentially what we're going to do we're going to take the duration and we're going to subtract the delta time. We're going to subtract the delta time. There you go. And um, actually here we have to return a boolean in case the animation has finished. So when is it finished? When the duration is actually less than zero or less than equals than zero. Uh, something like this. Actually, the update can be called multiple times um, even if the animation is already finished and every time it has to return true if it is finished. So we might as well even put this thing like this. If somebody called update and the animation is finished, we're going to right away return true. I think that's how we do that in the current tasks. If I remember correctly, let me actually see. So task move version four update. So yeah, that, that's how we do that. So if it's, if it's that, we return instantly out of that. But as you can see, we, we have to actually do it in here first. Right, so this is a very simple one. Uh, this is a very simple one. Um, interestingly, now we need to somehow reset the whole thing. And now we need to somehow reset the whole thing. So task wait reset, it is going to accept environment void raw data. Uh, right, so then we're gonna accept this kind of thing. So interestingly, since we're subtracting the duration, we're kind of losing the information of the duration. So maybe it would be better to actually do something like this. So here, this thing is initially expected to be equal to zero. And what we're doing, actually, we're adding delta time to t. So the animation is finished when delta t is greater or equal to the duration. So that's the end of the animation. So that makes it super easy to finish that, to reset this animation. Right, so because the reset of the animation is just setting t to zero, that's it. Um, right, so um, as we, how we're we gonna do that? Data t zero. So we just reset it. That's it. So we defined the data, uh, the state of that specific task. We defined two methods, and that's about it. Should be. So the rest of the thing is gonna be 
sort of like a bureaucracy, right? So now we need to create a constructor for this thing. Like, how do we properly construct this entire stuff, right? So let's actually say uh, task wait. And um, it's going to be allocated within the arena, right? So we usually allocate all of these things within the arena. So when we reset or reload things, we can automatically clean everything up, right? So clean everything up and forget about it. So uh, we accept the arena and we're going to accept the duration for how long, for how long we're going to be waiting. So we need to allocate the wait data, the, the state of the structure um, in the arena, in that specific arena. So arena alloc. Uh, size of data. So arena doesn't really return uh, like zeroed out memory. So we have to do mem set in here just to clean it up super quick. Uh, right. And then within that data, we're going to set the duration to the duration that is provided in the parameter of the constructor. And that's about it actually. Right. So we have to return the task. So since we mem set to zero, the T is going to be automatically zero. Uh, so, and here comes an interesting thing. We need to have a tag for the task wait. So we, we don't have a task a tag for that. Task wait tag. So it's also probably going to be some sort of a global thing in here. And it's going to be also changing task uh, wait tag. Initially is going to be zero. Uh, right. So, and then we also assign the data and data like this. Uh, so there we go. We have the definition of the state of the class. We have implementation of both of the methods and we have a constructor. The only thing we don't have is the tag. So we need to register this entire thing in the virtual table. So we can actually do that in the same place where we rebuild this entire thing. We can do task wait uh, tag and we can say task um, the table register and we can say please register. I suppose we have to do that within that specific arena. Uh, so this is, this is a very long expression. Let's replace this expression with just A, where A is going to be just this. So I think it's a little bit easier to read. So in here, we're going to just take the task funks, right? So, and then uh, this is going to be update, task, wait, update, and then reset. So that should be about it. That should be about it. So this there's, there's a little bit of additional work that you usually don't do in C++ is, is like manually registering in virtual table um, and also manually constructing, creating constructor. But quite often you actually do create, uh, create constructor manually. So I don't know, it's not even that much of a body plate compared to C++, if you think about it. It's not that much, right? So because in C++, like we define the state you also need to define the state in C++. You need to define the member variables. You defined both of the implementations. That's, you, that's something that you have to do in C++ as well. Uh, right. You have to define the constructor. If you don't use the default constructor, that's something that you also have to do in C++ as well. The usual thing that you don't have to do is registering in the virtual table. Right. So this is like an additional thing that you don't usually do. But apart from that, it's just not that much boilerplate. Syntactically, it's a little bit bigger, but semantically, so I create glib, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I created glib. Uh, all right, so uh, let me actually see if I can recompile this in that. Right. So uh, it doesn't recompile. Okay, so here we have an environment. We don't use the environment in here, right? So maybe I should actually comment out the building of some of these things, uh, right? Because they take way too much time. So let me quickly, quickly do that. Uh, Nob.c, right? We don't really have to build the template TM. Honestly, we don't even have to build Panim, right? Because the interface of the library is not changing. So we can just use the same executable uh, like over and over again, but we only need to rebuild the, the SO file. So that's actually way more convenient. So uh, it doesn't like A because it has to be a pointer, right? It has to be a pointer. What else do we have in here? So I forgot uh, a parenthesis in here. And here I probably have extra parentheses that are not needed. Okay, so, and compiled. It actually unironically compiled. So interestingly now, uh, in the shuffle, actually not in the shuffle, but in here, I can put uh, a little bit of a waiting between several shuffles, right? So here, look, look, I'm basically resetting the animation and it plays three shuffles, right? So as you can see in here, we said, here's the three shuffles and uh, play them sequentially. One, two, three. That's it. And then the animation stops. 
then animation stops. Now we introduced task wait, which is outside of this sort of like module of the task. We basically build that thing on top. And now we should be able to do the following thing. Okay, wait one second be between the shuffles, right? Like so. So we introduced a new task into the, the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to rebuild this entire stuff. It builds successfully. I'm going to hot reload. Okay, let's play the animation. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. We introduced a new task into the whole system. And it's hot reloadable because we're using virtual table. As much as I don't like like virtual methods and OP and stuff like that, it's not that bad, even. It's, it's okay, right? And the fact that it, like, yeah, it's, it's even extendable, right? So now I can quite easily add more tasks as I want to. So the only thing you have to be super careful with is how you register the, uh, the virtual methods, right? So how you register them. Uh, you have to register them always in the same order. You have to register them always in the same order. Uh, right. So, and essentially, so first you have to rebuild all of the standard, uh, you know, methods, right? So we have to append all of the standard ones and then this thing, right? And if you add new methods, you better add them at the end in here. So it's very important in which order you do these kind of things, in which order you register this kind of stuff. But apart from that, it's actually very simple, like virtual method system for C, um, that doesn't require like a bloated libraries like glib or anything like that. Um, maybe we can actually factor it out into its own small separate thing and see how it performs in the wild, right? So we, we can just take some bullshit OP exercise and define a bunch of classes like maybe animals, uh, right? It's, you know, the, the classical thing. Um, so yeah, this is kind of, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Uh, but to be fair, the, the only reason we're using virtual tables is because we're solving a very specific problem, right? So our problem is not that we are programming in procedural style and we must program in OP. No, 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 no. Our problem is that we store the pointers in a DLL and the DLL being hot reloaded. So we lose the, the actual pointers to the functions. So because of that, we're using a table that stab stabilizes this sort of pointers. Um, right. Cool. C object oriented library. <laughs> it's not even that object oriented. Like, what is freaking object oriented? Right? Just because you have dynamic dispatch, are you automatically object oriented? Honestly, like, I, I know that I put OOP into the title, but I did that intentionally because a clickbait, I'm a content creator, right? So I need to market my shit. But if we just like sit down and put the bullshit aside, right? What the fuck is object oriented? Um, so if I just have a dynamic dispatch based on the type, is this object oriented all of a sudden automatically? Really? Is that what it is? Is that a syntactical thing or is that a philosophical thing? Like, it's just like, what the fuck is that? I think it's just like a bullshit term to sell books. So that's what it is. OP is not a solution. OP is not a paradigm. It's a bullshit to sell books. That's what it is. My opinion. Uh, clickbait? Well, I mean, it worked if you're here, so. But I mean, at the same time, did you enjoy the stream? Was it interesting to watch? So, yeah. <clears throat> so there's nothing wrong with clickbait if after clicking you enjoyed whatever you saw. Did you enjoy whatever you saw? Was it fun? Was it Gucci? Was it Tamaguchi? What about OM? <laughs> OM is better than OP. Yes, I agree with that. Finally. Uh, OOP was the first clickbait. Exactly. Exactly. OOP is the clickbait. Mm -mm. I don't even know why it worked. Right. So what exactly in sort of in the name object oriented sort of clicks in the brain of non-technical people? Because all of these like paradigms and technologies, they are created not for actual programmers. They are created for non-technical people because non-technical people managers force this bullshit on programmers, right? So programmers have no word to say about what languages to use, what libraries to use, what methodologies to use, like nobody fucking asks them, right? So all of that shit is catered towards middle class managers 
that no fucking any, no nothing about programming whatsoever. So shit like no code, for instance, right? Obviously, it, it is marketed towards non-technical people because they are in charge somehow of a technical decisions. It's a fucking bizarre industry we're working in, honestly. It's a fucking bizarre industry. That's why all this shit like OOP works, right? Now, that's why all of these bullshit books sell because programmers for some reason are not in charge of technical decisions. And it's so fucking disgusting. One of the reasons why I left this industry, by the way, fuck that. Fuck that shit. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I want to kind of try that outside of Panium. And to be fair, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be using that at the end of the day, right? So it's kind of like, this kind of thing kind of nerd sniped me. Um, so, and I'm surprised it worked. I'm fucking surprised it worked. So what I'm thinking is that um, I'm going to make a small break. I'm going to make a cup of tea. Earl Grey specifically. We're, we're drinking Earl Grey today, okay? And we're going to try to extract this magical, magical OOP system that is solution to all of your complexity problems, right? It's literally a silver bullet. We're going to extract it into a separate library and see how it performs. Sounds good? Sounds Gucci? Sounds what? Tamaguchi? Let's go. Okay. So let's see what we can do. Does anybody know any good sort of like OP bullshit examples that we can try to, to use in here, if you know what I'm talking about? You know, something like, okay, let, let me show you what I mean. So we can go into maybe Java, uh, right? So to so public class main, so uh, public uh, static void main string args. Uh, so, and essentially we want to have something like interface, interface, like animal, uh, right. So we, we have an animal and what usually we have, uh, I, I don't know, um, say, right. Something like say, do you have to put public in here? I don't freaking remember. Uh, right. So, and essentially then you have something like a class dog implements animal, right. So, and then you say public, uh, public void say um, system out println. Uh, you, you didn't see that exclamation mark. So it's just like a bark, right? You know what I'm talking about? This kind of bullshit stuff, does anybody know? <laughs> you go to 156, and he's like, his uh, OOP is too hardcore for what we're trying to do, right? So, <laughs> okay, let me, let me actually see. So, like this is, some people don't even consider whatever the fuck he's doing OOP honestly because it looks more like Haskell, uh, right? So what what he's trying to do? He's trying to program in Haskell but using Java. Um, so let me show them. <laughs> fucking. Uh, <clears throat> but I mean. I mean, it's a valid idea, right? It's a valid idea, but this is more like Haskell. So essentially what he has in here, what he's trying to do, he's trying to build this, basically a tree of these lazy objects, uh, this tree of the lazy objects. And essentially once you activate one object, the other object starts to lazily activate others and they do this sort of the trick. It's, it's literally thunks in Haskell, right? He's basically doing thunks uh, but but in Java, so that's what he's doing, and he's calling that the, the like actual OOP or something like that. So th this is not the kind of OOP we're trying to do. The normie OOP, you know what I'm talking about, right? So th this is too fucking hardcore for like for the OOP we're trying to do. Um, so <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> can you do monads in, in in Java though? Monads is like. They require a very powerful type system to actually pull off properly, honestly. Pretty cool idea. It's an interesting idea, nonetheless. He, is, he has a lot of weird ideas regarding programming. Um, I'm not entirely, I'm not agree with his political ideas though, right? So, but in terms of programming, his ideas are kind of interesting, right? So you will want to look into them. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, what, we, what we have in here, so maybe let's put a cat in here and it's going to be male, All right? And essentially is the, uh, the idea is we're going to have like a list of things, like array, can I have the, like an array of uh, animals, right? So it's going to be animal, 
um, and animals. And I forgot how to do Java. Does anybody remember how to do Java? Uh, right. So does anybody remember? Uh, because I completely forgot about it. So uh, Java array list G. So program is Java programming inheritance. Okay, let's take a look at this example that you suggested. Uh, so, eh, so methods, it's, it's kind of cool that you say, okay, methods and fields of animal and dog, but what kind of methods? What, what are good ideas for these methods? Eat, huh. display, nah, bro, nah, bro. So you can do it. Mm, I eat dog food. I can bark. <laughs> ah, brav, 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 brav. Some good examples would have been way better, but I mean, it's just like th that's the problem with the OP, by the way. That's the problem with IOP. They just show these bullshit examples that have nothing to do with how actual software development is done. And when you try to apply these ideas, they just don't fucking work because they're not designed for like actual software development. They're designed for these bullshit things, right? So, <laughs> but by the way, the case with tasks, actually a way better example of, of these ideas. Right, so the, the case with task is way better example because it's like a tangible things and we can even demonstrate and you can have a lot of different kinds of tasks and stuff like that. UI, maybe UI or something like that. Hmm. But what's interesting is that those tasks, they kind of similar to UI layout. Right, so because UI layout is a spatial layout and the task layout that I created is a time layout. It's like UI layout, but, but in time. Right. So essentially, a sequence task is a horizontal alignment of the object. Group task is a like vertical alignment, and group task is a horizontal one. Right. Sequential, like se executes them sequentially, and the group executes them simultaneously. Right. So it's sort of like a spatial thing, like like time thing. Right. And it's kind of similar. So which is actually kind of cool, and because it acts like a, like a UI layout. It should be kind of maybe even possible to create an immediate version of that of that system, right? So because what I created in here, if you think about that, uh, so where is the SRC task? Uh, yeah, so I need to find the square, right? So loading. Yeah, essentially what I created in here is a retained one. Honestly, this code looks, looks like Igor's code, if you think about it. It does fucking look like his code. Um, where is it? <laughs> Just a second. Ah. Mm. Yeah, it, it kind of is because you, you have, and it's also kind of like a like a tree of lazy. Oh, what the fuck? Maybe he's right after all. Maybe it is the actual correct OP shit. So, yeah. And here's the thing. So the idea is that none of the like this entire structure this entire construction doesn't do anything constructors do not do anything at all they have no effects they only put they only place the objects in their internal like uh, fields and stuff like that the actual action happens when you call this sort of method value and that sort of like forces the thunk like in, in like in Haskell and it actually starts calling all of the methods of all of these internal things and so on and so forth and it just activates the object and it does the thing right so and it's kind of similar in here right so because by themselves if you construct this kind of things they don't do anything unless you call an update method of that thing right so it's kind of similar to his uh, his code mm -mm. so can you signal proposals for JavaScript I haven't read it actually um... Class true implements boolean. Yeah, it's kind of like that. All right, it's kind of like that. So that's the his proposed OOP. Uh, right, and this one is really interesting that, for example, sorted doesn't actually sort anything unless you try to get the value of that thing, right? So it literally postpones the process of sorting. Uh, I know this kind of shit because I think I even contributed to this, <laughs> to this library. <laughs> Right, so I actually know his philosophy quite well. I do not necessarily agree with it. <clears throat> I think it leads to really poor performance and you can actually feel that by using any of his 
projects, if you literally tried any of his projects, they are dog shit slow, like insane. <clears throat> they're dog shit slow. But, uh, so, but I like interesting philosophical ideas about programming in general, right? So, um, what I liked about it is just like how fresh it looked at the time. But then when I looked further into that, it's just like, it's, it's kind of meh, right? So it's just like, it's reiterating the Haskell ideas and it's just like, eh, whatever. Um, so. Mm -mm. Google JavaScript signals proposal. It's very interesting and similar to this. Let's actually take a look at that. <clears throat> Google JavaScript signals. Um, this seems a little niche for this idea to be performed. Yeah. So, and as far as I know, when he points out, when somebody points out to his ideas being not performant, he actually deflects them by saying that Java is not a true OOP language. That's why the true OOP ideas are slow in Java, right? Because it's not really an OOP language. It's a, it's a procedural language that is mimicking OOP language and it has nothing to do with the real OOP, like, like small talk or anything like that. And because of that, by the way, he's working on his own language. Uh, so it's called EO, which is elegant objects. Right, so pure object-oriented programming language based on fee calculus. He f even freaking developed like an, an entire fundamental computational model specifically for this language. Um, you know how procedural language are, are based on Turing machines? Uh, functional languages like Haskell are based on lambda calculus. Specifically for pure OOP objects, he created his own um, fundamental computational models and said, okay, so OOP is based on that. So it's not just like some bullshit paradigm. It also has its theoretical basis. So he went like a long way to actually like develop this entire thing. So he has a white paper about this kind of stuff. It's unfucking un un readable, but it's actually fascinating. <laughs> It is freaking fascinating. So his language, it, it looks like this, right? So this is what it looks like. So it's syntactically catered towards this sort of like ideas of uh, building like a very big uh, compositions of objects and stuff like that, right? So uh, yeah, so th that's basically the true object-oriented language. This is the true object-oriented language. This is how Java is supposed to look like actually. Yep. Uh, I don't really know what's the target for this thing. Uh, what's the actual target? Holy shit! Oh, this is this is the basically syntax, BNF BNF for this language. Uh, all right. So, yeah. This is real coding. Fuck C exactly. Fuck C. So what's the target? Uh, quick start. Install Java SE and <laughs> holy fucking shit. Okay. To build this language, you need. Java SC standard edition, NPM, Rust with Cargo. And I suppose it's self-hosted, right? So EOC is just like a compile. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, <laughs> command line toolkit for parsing and compiling, transpiling, optimizing, linking, dataizing. Jesus, bro. Jesus. Uh, and running EOLang programs. Damn. Ooh, well, as Terry have said, we know the people who admire complexity. We know the people who admire complexity. And we know the people who admire simplicity. That's everything I have to say about all that. That is literally everything I have to say about that. So, and honestly, I have nothing against what he's doing in programming world specifically. Uh, I think it's kind of cool when people experiment with different ideas and stuff like that, especially if these ideas are like very interesting because a lot of his programming ideas are very interesting. Like ask anybody who tried to understand what the fuck he's doing. It's, it's very fucking interesting. It's weird. It, sometimes it's even outrageous, but it's interesting nonetheless. So I'll, I'll give him that. I'll give him that. Um, so anyway. <clears throat> mm. What are we doing? 
We're doing OP, right? So we need a bullshit OP example. We need a bullshit OP example like this. Uh, yeah, I, I was trying to find how to use uh, array list. I, I haven't programmed in Java for quite some time already, so forgive me if I don't remember how to probably do that. So essentially, we have to uh, we're just adding things in here. So I can do animals, uh, animals add new dog. Right, so new dog and new cat. Let's try to compile this into I think. Do I even have a Java C? I do have a Java C. Look at that. So Java C main.java. Let's go. Okay, so it's located in Java Utils, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh import Java Utils uh like so. Alrighty. Yeah. Util, it's a single one. It's only one. They don't uh, like offer you many utils, only a one. Uh, Use this unchecked or unsafe operation. So which one? C can you at least tell me where it is happening? <laughs> is that because uh, I think I have to do this kind of thing, right? Okay, so that, that, that's basically right. You're supposed to like provide a full type. But if I remember correctly, it can infer that type if it's like specified in here. On top of that, I think in the modern Java, I uh, you can do shit like this. Can can you do shit like that? Yeah, you you can. I, I just remember that. I never really. Uh, here's the thing. I think the last Java I programmed in was Java eight. Did the Java eight have uh, vars? So this is the last Java I programmed in. Right, I think, I don't know when they, they it didn't have them. Okay, so yeah. I, I never had an opportunity to actually use this kind of thing. Right. So var is Java 10, okay, okay, so. Right, Be because I used to work as like commercially with, with Java, right? So I started with Java 6 and then up until Java 8 and then I dropped out of this entire circus. Um, Java 8 introduced lambdas. I used lambdas, I used lambdas, but I didn't use var. Okay, anyways. Uh, so, yes, 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 so if you try to run this entire thing, that's okay, so that's cool. Uh, how do you do for each? I already forgot. Uh, so let me let me see how oh, we have to do. Okay, Java for each. Uh, geeks for geeks, dicks for dicks. Oh, ho, 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 ho. gotcha hyper in the chat. <clears throat> Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so we have to do something like this, all right. Uh, so for animal, 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 uh, animals. I'm pretty sure I can do shit like that. Uh, true performance artist, yes. High performance artist. High performance artist. Uh, animal, and then we do say. Okay, so that should be enough. We have to recompile this entire thing. Mm -hmm. Look at that! Look at that! We have a homogeneous array of animals, and then we put different animals into that homogeneous array. We call them and they say different things. Holy fuck, that's the marvels of the OOP. Buy my book. Buy my book, and you will know how to do this kind of stuff. Program in my. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so uh, what kind, what other methods can we add to this to the animal? What what other things uh, animals can do? Does anybody know? Um, that's some dynamic dispatch you got there. I know, I know. Do you like poop? <laughs> mm, by the way, you you also supposed to say override a thing, right? To indicate that this thing has been overwritten. Uh, run. So okay. Uh, Poop. Uh, what happens uh, when you poop? What happens when you poop? So we can introduce maybe um, some sort of a toilet, right? So toilet, uh, which is going to be a class, uh, right? And we're going to accept basically place right so we have a place uh so we place something right so an object of some sort all right um place maybe shit right so you you place a shit into this thing uh 
And essentially, internally, internally, I think uh, we're going to have array list. Um, so this is going to be string, and this is basically going to shits, right? So as far as now, I can just create uh, array list uh, like so. So we have shits in here, and uh, essentially, what you do when you take a total, you can place shits a shit into the shits, right? So essentially, when a dog poops, it poops into the toilet, right? So toilet. And when dog poops, it places the dog shit into the toilet. So, and also you can actually flush, of course, that's a cool idea. So public void flush. And what it does, it just clears the shits. Right, so clear the shits. Um, all right, so you... So you have a dog, it poops into the toilet, and when it poops, it, place, it places dog shit into the toilet. So that's what it does. And then um, when uh, you poop, the cat poops into the toilet. By the way, this has to be actually part of the interface, right? So this toilet, uh, toilet, right. Um, Poop, uh, toilet, toilet, uh, and there you go. And then toilet, place, cat shit into the toilet. All right. So another probably um, operation that you want to do, right? Uh, another operation that you can do, you can essentially look into, right? Look into the toilet. And when you look into the toilet, it basically prints what's contained within the toilet. Uh, <laughs> you guys seem to like this <laughs> I'm doing OP, okay? I'm just doing OP. Alright, it's come down. This is basically what OP people want you to do. This is the programming from the point of view of OP people. That's what it's supposed to be. Uh, so, and essentially, we have to check actually. So, if shits. Um, I don't know, do we have count? How, how many elements do we have in here? Or maybe length? I think there was some sort of like a length. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. There was a length. Uh, count. Yeah, boy. Um, so, oh, there is, is empty. Okay, so if shits is empty, uh, we're gonna print system out print len. Uh, toilet is empty. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna put eh, put it like that. So and here we're gonna say toilet contains contains, uh, and we're gonna iterate through the shits, right? So string shit shits, and we just do system out print len print len shit. There we go. So we're looking into the toilet. All right. So what we're gonna be doing? Uh, what we're gonna be doing? we are going to create the toilet right so we have toilet new toilet let's go so we create a bunch of animals we create a bunch of animals and then we just look into the toilet right we look into the toilet like so then we iterate to the animals and we uh, ask animal to say something and we ask animal to poop into the toilet right so that's basically what we do after this entire procedure we look into the toilet again we look into the toilet again. Uh, right, so we then have flush. Uh, right, so maybe after that we can flush this entire stuff and we'll look into the toilet yet again. Right, so we have an empty toilet at the beginning of the procedure. We iterate to each animal and we ask it to say something and then we ask it to poop into the toilet. After the entire procedure has been finished, we look into the toilet to confirm that the, the animals actually placed something in the toilet. We flush the toilet and we look into the toilet again to confirm that flushing actually worked. Right, so now if we take a look at that, so what do we have in here? Uh, so probably, yeah, there we go. So initially, initially toilet is empty. Then we hear a bark. We hear a bark. Then we hear a mouth. We look into the toilet again and the toilet contains dog shit and cat shit. Then, uh, essentially, we um, uh, flush everything and now the toilet is empty. To be fair, I would like to maybe indent whatever is contained within the toilet. So let's actually use printf so I can do something like uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, is going to be something like this. It's, it has to be S, right? So I'm going to place it like this. 
All right, so we can like see a little bit of indentation. Right, toilet is empty. Bark mew. Toilet contains dog shit, cat shit, and toilet is empty. <clears throat> so maybe when we are flushing, it also makes sense to print uh, this kind of thing. Um, flushing, flushing of the toilet. Right, so like this. And maybe every time you hear a sound, every time you hear a sound, we have to actually put it like this. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's actually get rid of the exclamation mark. All right. Okay. So how do you like my OOP skills? So we have separate objects in here. We have an animals. We actually have several animals and we have a toilet. And these objects, they interact with, uh, with each other by sending signals to each other, right? So it's, it's literally, it's the most OOP uh, example you can come up with. Actually, this is the most OOP. It's the take my money. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so the question is how are we going to be doing that in C? How are we going to be doing that in C? Um, interestingly, uh, is that in C, uh, animals, uh, animals.c, animals.c. Uh, so what's funny is that creating a new implementation of an interface is actually rather easy. It's kind of difficult to create new interfaces because for the new interfaces, you need to create this um, machinery, right? You need to create a separate virtual table. You need to create the dispatcher and so on and so forth. But maybe it's not that bad, actually. Maybe it's not that bad. Uh, people are subbing, by the way. I haven't I've been ignoring subs for quite some time. I really apologize for that. So sometimes that happens. Uh, so I think I acknowledge Nameless Blossom. Uh, so Aziros, thank you so much for Twitch Prime uh, with the message when green threads in C. By the way, the tasks are kind of similar to green threads, honestly. They're kind of similar to green threads. So I, I would say that I implemented them, essentially. Um, so yeah, like actual green threads would be interesting, honestly. Actual green threads. Uh, so Lazar A, thank you so much for tier one and better call, better call Paul. Thank you so much for Twitch Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So do you guys like the OOP stuff? The OOP stuff. <clears throat> Alright, so as you can see, I don't dislike OOP for nothing. I actually know a thing or two about it, right? So uh, usually I do not dislike things that I know nothing about. Right. So usually like I, I'm indifferent to like new ideas like of technology or anything like that unless I tried them and I experienced all of their bullshitness. On, only then I start to kind of actively hate them, right? So, mm -mm. sadly, I know about it. Mm -mm. What is actual green threads? Uh, it's essentially threads that are single threaded that are executed on. Um, let, let's put it this way. Um, they do not correspond to the operating system thread, right? So they do not correspond to the operating system thread. So the runtime of the language itself manages the threads, manages the threads and schedules the threads. And usually it's happening within a single uh, operating system thread, right? So th that's what it is. That's what it basically is. So it might be useful if you are not doing anything parallel right if you don't need don't need parallelism because you're trying to parallel some work or something like that you only need um concurrency right so you only need concurrency because you are maybe interacting with several sockets you don't really need to interact with several sockets in parallel because it's not like um like a very heavy load heavy computational load because sometimes the socket can be not not sending you anything or anything like that uh but you need to do that concurrently right so you need to do that concurrently and in that case green threads are really great because usually since it's all happening within the time of your program there the creation and the destroying destroying of green threads is much cheaper than the threat of an operating system Right, so there's some cases when it's actually kind of like good, uh, right? For specifically for concurrency, it's usually good. If you need parallelism, uh, because you have a lot of computational work, it's probably not going to work well. So that's what they are. 
Um, have you ever called, wrote code in .NET? Nothing serious, honestly. I wrote, like, in advent of code, I solved one problem in C Sharp. So technically, uh, technically, I wrote something for .NET, but it just like, was one time, and I, I never wrote in .NET ever again. So, I don't know, probably not. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, so what we're going to have in here. So we need to create an interface for animal. We need to create an interface for animal. So the problem with this stuff is that um, they don't have a state. So they don't have a state. Hmm. And then so it's kind of it's kind of interesting actually. So essentially if this guts is empty, we don't do anything. If they're not empty, we place that into the toilet and we clean them up. Maybe not Gus, but more maybe ass. So yeah, something like this. No guts. Eh, it's kind of I don't know. So yeah. So ass is empty. We place ass into the toilet and we empty out the ass. Ass is unbound, yeah, so ass is unbound actually. So I, I just need to introduce the state into the program, into the into the objects, right? So uh, we're gonna have private string s, and uh, this is a cat shit. So and essentially, essentially, if um, this s is not empty, we're placing this s into the toilet, and then we empty this s like so right so essentially if you pooped once if you pooped once and you will try to poop again it's not gonna place shit into the toilet you know what i'm talking about we can actually introduce the method feed <laughs> mm -mm. um Let's not go there, but I mean, it's, we, we can introduce method, method feed, which actually refills the ass with shit, essentially. Right, so that's what we can do. Um, all right, so essentially, we look into the toilet, we go to the animals and we ask them to poop, we look into the uh, like toilet, we flush it, we look into it again, then we do this kind of stuff one more time and we look into the toilet again. So, and that should end up with the empty toilet if we didn't make any mistake. Okay, so that's cool. Right, so essentially toilet is empty, bark, mill, then toilet contains shit. Flushing of the toilet, toilet is empty. Again, we hear sounds of the animals, but this time the toilet is empty because they already shit into the toilet and we already flushed it. So, uh, all of that was needed to introduce the state into the object, right? Because without it, like, yeah, we need to have an example like that. So, we need to have an example like that, I think. <clears throat> so, all right, so let's actually try to introduce maybe uh, the following thing. So, this is going to be an animal, uh, right? And an animal is simply like a tag, right? So, this is a tag, and uh, this is a data, so to speak. What's funny is that, what's funny is that, chat, any interface, literally any interface is going to look like this. Like if I create a different interface, which is something like a car, 
it's also going to look like this. Which makes me think, maybe it should be just interface. But it, we're kind of losing like a type, uh, like stronger typing because of that. Right. We're kind of losing a stronger type. I think it should be its own separate interface. Yeah, it should be its own separate interface. It's like a variant type. Yeah, maybe, but I don't know. Anyways, so then uh, we define the methods, the methods of the interface. So let's actually see. Uh, so where is the interface? Interface. Right. So we have two methods in here, which is basically say, right, and it's going to be a pointer. Um, and it doesn't really accept anything. It just says say uh, animal, uh, animal funks. So this is basically the, the funks we, call, we can call the methods, right? So this is the methods. And then we also have poop, right? So which is going to accept the toilet, right? But the toilet is not an abstract class. So that's the thing about it. That's the thing about it. So maybe we're going to accept the toilet. Toilet is probably going to be uh, just a dynamic array, right? So it's going to be struct like this, and it's going to be just uh, uh, items, right? Like so, size t count capacity, right? So it's going to be something like that. So we accept that. And when the animals are pooping into the toilet, uh, they, uh, they're they just going to push stuff into, into that thing. All right, so that is basically the definition of a single interface, I think. So almost, we also need to generate the method callers for this kind of stuff. So we need to have animal uh, say, which will accept an animal uh, itself. Uh, right. And uh, we also need to have animal poop, which is going to accept... Um, the toilet, the pointer to the toilet. So the, these things. But the thing about that stuff is that they need to look that up in the virtual table. So we need to have uh, something like animal v table. So this is going to be an animal v table, which is going to be basically a bunch of methods, right? So this is basically items, size t count, uh, capacity. So, yeah, when we define an interface, we have to define this thing, we have to define this thing, we have to define this thing. Uh, on top of that, we probably have to maybe define a global, a global object, which is going to be animal v table, right? Animal uh, v table, uh, v table like this, which is going to be like this. And also the things that register a new thing within that table. But for registering we think, uh, these things, I think we can just use macro because it's literally just pushing stuff, right? So literally just pushing stuff. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So um, we can define vtable register. We accept vtable in here. And we want this thing to return something. So here, um, unfortunately, pushing something into uh, into dynamic array is a statement, not an expression. So we can't really easily return stuff from it. So okay, but we can do some stuff like um, animal v table v table register, and this thing returns like size t. Uh, yeah, defining new implementations for the interface is easy. Defining new interfaces requires doing all of these things that C++ does for you automatically. Uh, it does for you automatically. This shit is crazy. It's fine. Trust me. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. So we're going to have something like this. Okay. So we do uh, animal v table register. Uh, we do animal v table register. So we're going to just do knob di append. Uh, we provide the animal uh, animal v table. And we also have to accept the methods. So animal methods, methods, methods. Let me just push them in here. So we probably need to create a tag in here, which is the size, the current size of this thing. So this is going to be count. And then we just return that tag that you can then use for different things. All right. So essentially, when you call a method animal say, when you call a method, a method animal say, we take an animal, we take in its tag, we take in its tag, and we're looking it up 
in the animal v table right so we looking it up in the animal v table and in here we grab the function say and we have to pass the animal data in there animal data and i think i forgot to yeah one of the things i forgot is to accept uh the data like this right so because data is basically this like a this special variable or something like that um okay so and we pass the data and that's about it so this is a single call over virtual method this is a single call over virtual method so let's actually create another one uh right so here again we're taking a tag over object right so tag of object uh, then we're looking it up in a virtual table and then we're calling the method poop uh, providing the state of the object, the state of the animal, and also the toilet into which this thing is going to poop. Right. So that's what we're doing in here. All right. So we've got some stuff in here. So we basically defined an interface. If you want to define an interface in C, this is how much work you need to do. Right. So 34 lines of code in Java versus how many interface? Four. But I mean, the, the compiler of Java probably does this kind of stuff for you automatically. To, to be fair, I don't really know what Java even generates. Java is a virtual machine, so this is more like the stuff that C++ kind of will do for you instead, right? So it's it's better to compare that to C++ rather than Java. So I, the only reason I use Java is just because it was easy to, easy to program, in, right? I don't remember how to do that in C++. C++ doesn't even have interfaces, honestly. Right, it has objects with abstract methods or virtual methods or something like that. Um, so, yeah. Java is so concise, OMG, yes, exactly. Anyways, uh, let me now maybe build the animals. So this is gonna be animals, uh, animals C, and let's go through the compilation errors because I'm pretty sure uh, it's not gonna compile first try. Uh, where is the, oh, the knob is, is contained within SRC, that's right. All right, so here, uh, poop, uh -huh. so it has to be a pointer to the function. And vtable is a count, um, vtable is a, ah, no, when we register, since we made this thing global, I think there's no point in accepting it as, a, uh, as this thing, so I don't know why I decided to do it like that. So it doesn't like the way I use this thing because I have to take it as a pointer. There we go, so that seems to be working. So our definition of an interface compiled successfully. It in fact compiled successfully okay so now we need to define the implementations of the classes and stuff like that so maybe i'm gonna do um animal um, animal interface right so this is basically what we have uh, maybe animal interface begin this is where it begins uh, and this is where it ends right mm -hmm. So that's basically the definition of that single interface. If it compiles at work, exactly. You know it. You know it, my friend. You know it. Uh, anyway, so let's actually have something like a cat uh, class. Um, let's start with the dog, right? So let's start with the dog. So this is begin, uh, maybe something like this. And this is going to be the end. So first of all, we need to define the, um, you know, dog data, where are we going to uh, store all of that? So dog data, it's going to basically have an ass, right? So where it stores its shit that is going to be placing into the toilet, right? So uh, that's basically what we have in here. And let's implement the methods, the main methods. So the first method is um, dog say, right? So it accepts the data, actually it accepts the raw data. Uh, and it doesn't really accept anything else, right? So, and in case of a say, we kind of ignore the raw data. So let's actually say that we're not going to do anything. So it's a raw data. And in here, we just print uh, bark, right? So that's what we print in here. So we just do bark. So this is the first implementation of that method. So then we do uh, dog poop, which accepts the raw data, but also it accepts the toilet into which is going to be pooping. So here we're gonna say, uh, okay, so doc data, uh, data raw data, right? So, and essentially if data as, um, so here we have an opportunity to actually denote the empty as with null, which is rather convenient. So if data as, what we're gonna do, you take the toilet 
place toilet data s and then empty the s with no so in java we couldn't really do that very easily because uh, you can't uh, wait you can null them everything can be nulled i completely forgot about that we could have done the same thing in java we could have done the same thing in java very well whatever uh date as wait a fucking second okay so and here we should not say uh bark or anything like that okay <clears throat> so we created the state of the dog we created a method say we created a method method poop so the next thing we need to do we need to create a constructor for the dog right so this is going to be something like mm, i suppose animal <clears throat> excuse me and uh, we're going to say dog new and it's not probably going to contain anything or whatever so essentially what we need to do we need to do dog data uh, and then we're going to just malloc uh, that specific data so it's going to be size of data uh, size of data we're going to populate it with different things so this is going to be dog shit right so this is going to be dog shit and then we're going to just return animal um yeah and this one is interesting so because if we're going to be returning the animal if you take a look at the definition of the animal so we have to have a tag so that means we also need to keep track of that tag somehow so <clears throat> let's define uh something like dog tag dog tag and it's going to be initially zero but this is something that we're going to be using for the tag in here dog tag and for the data in here there we go we just created an implementation of the animal interface right so this is the definition of the interface of a single interface right a single animal interface and this is the implementation of a, uh, like uh, of that interface one single implementation right so let's see if it even compiles let's see if it even compiles right so uh we don't have toilet place right so this is something that we probably have to implement super quick uh so we're gonna accept the toilet uh toilet and construct shit so not da append uh toilet shit all right so might have actually done define toilet place knob da append all right so that seems to be working okay so this is the first thing cat is kind of similar right so we can even copy paste implementation of dog and make it a cat so let's go uh so i'm gonna select all of that stuff and literally query replace dog with cat uh right so this is a cat uh cat blah 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 and there will be a few changes in here right so cat chat is gonna uh, leave this this uh, but instead of bark we're gonna do mu okay so now we have a second implementation of this thing so all of that kind of corresponds in java with this thing right which is an interface then implementation of like this is the first implementation and this is the second implementation to be fair c implementation of an interface is not that much bigger look at that so if we take a look uh this is 30 lines of code in c uh, and in here how many lines of code we have uh 16. it's just twice as much it's only twice as much right in c it's not that much honestly it's not like magnitudes it's just only twice anyways uh so that's about it honestly i think and that's about it let's actually see if it compiles or not um i would like to maybe have a list of the animals right so let's actually define a uh, list of animals so we can do something like this so animals uh, which is going to be a dynamic array uh, so this is going to be animal items then size t uh, count and then capacity right so that way we can uh, push animals in there but the first thing we, we have to do before we can even work with all that we have to register all of these things yeah we need to register v tables and stuff like that so uh the first thing we're gonna do register um let's maybe uh so v table how is it called register yeah animal v table register um all right so first thing we're gonna do we're gonna do a dog tag right and then here we have to use uh the methods of the dog 
and the methods we have in here is say dog say dog say then uh, poop dog poop and the same thing has to happen uh, for the cat as well like so so there we go we registered all of the virtual table uh, methods and stuff like that right uh, that's pretty cool that's pretty cool so let's actually see if it compiles or not it does in fact compile let's create a list of animals let's create a list of animals uh animals like this uh, initially is going to be empty and let's literally now translate our java program our java program into a c program so we need to also have a toilet right so there we go we have a toilet in here uh, we created both of these things in here as you can see right so here's the toilet animals Toilets animals. Cool. The next thing we have to do, we have to append new animals. We have to create a dog, a dog new, and a knob da, uh, knob da append animals, uh, right? So we basically added dog and we added cat and we add them to this, uh, to a single list, to a single list. <laughs> Mm -mm. So, and after that, to be fair, what I would like to do, I would like to iterate through all of them and just like ask them to say something to confirm that it, it in fact works, right? Or to confirm that it in fact works. So how many animals do we have in here, right? So it's going to plus plus i. Then we take animals items i and we literally say animal say. Right, so as you can see, we're referring to an abstract virtual method. We don't call directly dog new or cat new. We say animal say. Now it will be up to that thing to dispatch everything correctly. Let's see if, it's go if it dispatches all of that stuff. Uh, okay, so it seems to be compiling. Uh, let's now run animals and it says bark and mew. So if I change the order of these two things, it's a mew bark. You don't need Java you don't need C++ to have polymorphism. You can have polymorphism at home. <laughs> right? So the only thing we need to do, we just need to uh, create a virtual table, right? Our own virtual table. Look at that, look at that. Like this is literally our own virtual table and it just works like, just like in C++. Just like in C++, you don't need C++, you don't need Java, you don't need C Sharp. You can do all of that shit in C if you want to. You're just lazy. <laughs> anyway, anyway, can your Zeke do that? Can your Rust do that? Well, Rust can do that actually. Rust also has virtual tables as far as I know. Mm -mm. So anyway, uh, the next thing we have to do. So we need to implement some other uh, things that we have in this original example. So we need to look into the look into the toilet, right? So toilet, uh, look into. Uh, we're gonna supply the toilet like so and uh, we probably will need to implement that so let's actually go ahead and implement that uh so what does it say so we don't have that thing um all right toilet uh look into look into we're gonna accept the toilet uh toilet there we go and uh what we need to do if i look into this stuff all right so if toilet count is empty we just say print f toilet is empty it's that simple otherwise uh we just say well we have to do something like this uh -huh. toilet is uh, contains contains four size t so we need to iterate all of that stuff toilet uh, count plus plus i and i'm going to print f uh, s toilet items i uh, and that's basically it, i think i think that's basically it so let's actually try to recompile this entire thing i forgot that it's a pointer actually uh sure so we checked that toilet is empty then we heard bark mill and uh now we need to continue uh you know porting this problem this problem a uh, program so the next thing we need to do we need to say animal poop and we ask the animal to poop into the toilet, right? So let's see if it compiles. Uh, there we go. It seems to be compiling. So the next thing we need to do, we need to look into the toilet after the animals has pooped into them. And it works. So the next thing we need to do, we need to flush uh, the toilet. Flush. But we need to implement that method as well. 
so so void uh, void toilet flush mm, toilet toilet uh, and uh, so let's actually take a look at the main dot java uh, flush so we just do print f um, flushing of the toilet new and we just say toilet count is zero all right so look good to me uh yeah so look at that toilet is empty bark new toilet contains that flushing of the toilet afterwards we'll look into it yet again and it's empty it's totally empty so now another thing we do the same thing with the animals one more time and we're looking into the toilet yet again so look at what happens right toilet is initially empty bark mew toilet contains shit flush in the toilet toilet is empty bark mew toilet is still empty because their ass is empty because once you shed once it gets rid of the ass according to the logic so the output of this program and the java program is actually identical right and they're even implemented in an identical way right so we do use polymorphism right so the logic is literally the same so we have these virtual methods and they dispatch between the animals and stuff like that so you can do op and c you can do anything in c right so you don't need c plus plus you don't need java and it's not that even much code right so 171 lines of code versus 88 so the same program with literally the same functionality with the same semantic they literally have the same semantic they do the same thing right so 88 lines of code and c only 170 like it's only twice it's not that much like why do you need an entire separate language <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah to be fair this is kind of like a lot of work for, for this kind of thing and you have to be super careful to do this kind of thing uh, right so it's better if the compiler would just you know generate all of these things for you automatically but it's doable see it's doable and it's equivalent uh, and everything so yeah about that uh, o o p in c o o p in c o o p in c <sighs> so um i was streaming for two and a half of an hour chat uh compare binary sizes so we find superior version <laughs> i mean like we can't really compare them uh because do we include jvm into the binary size right so we have a bunch of classes in here okay sure uh, I can just do du uh, right on the class, right? And it's to be fair, it's twenty kilobytes, like in total, right? It's twenty kilobytes. And if I take a look at the uh, animals, holy shit! <laughs> the actual native executable of animals is smaller than the bytecode of Java combined. What the? fuck is good wait no it's not true like it didn't no 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 it's, it's, it's not it's not true this is bullshit like what the fuck is this what the fuck is this no it's, it's not correct um can i just do something like uh yeah yeah no no no, no, no. so, so it's, it's fine it's fine it's, it's actually smaller it's a disk size i guess but but then anyway, do we include JVM? Because JVM is a huge thing, right? So th this binary depends only uh, on what? It depends on libc, right? So and on Linux kernel. Your program depends on JVM that depends on libc uh, and the kernel and actually a bunch of more things. So OS, we can try to do OS. Uh, so optimize the size. Uh, let's optimize the size. OS. Uh, that didn't do anything, honestly. Yeah, that's literally didn't do anything. So it didn't really improve it that much. Um, so. Okay. So kind of funny. Like it's kind of funny that I had a situation when I really, like, literally had to use something that is reminiscent of virtual tables, right? And that situation was because I was storing function pointers in DLL that I'm constantly re reloading. Uh, and I was storing these pointers in a place that should not be reloaded when the DLL is reloaded. Right. It's kind of an interesting use case. And only 
at that specific use case, I needed something remains instead of virtual tables. And it's like, I don't even need them, right? I just need a table of functions and the correspondence between an index and the function. It doesn't have to be like OOP style even. It doesn't even have to be OOP style. I understand the joke, but did ever see such stuff in real life? Oh, you mean the, the thing that we model in here? Yeah, that's the point of OOP. You're basically modeling the reality. And this kind of stuff has happened in reality. I, I, think, I think I even saw this kind of situation in reality as well. Um, so some time ago, right? So if you own a cat and a dog, I think something like that may happen. So because of that, we can say that OOP uh, has a reason to exist as a methodology. No, I mean in C. Um, so you, you did ever saw such code in real, like in actual software development, that's what you mean, right? So you actually saw people writing stuff like that, and ironically, ha, huh. or maybe I misread you. Anyways, so I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreation programming session with Mr. Azuzin. I love you. Mwah.